Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Trackman44 here. I guess if you look behind me, all this fancy yellow and black stuff, uh, you can probably tell I'm, I'm assembling something. Okay, what I've got here is a, uh, a Frontier brand bandsaw. It's an OS27 capable of rolling a 27 inch log onto the bunks. I'm following the direction of everything, trying to do everything like you're supposed to. And I assembled the frame. You can see the frame behind me. I assembled that down on flat on the concrete floor because the concrete floor is fairly low. There you can see the bunk assembly right there. What that is, that's the standard, the standard uh, two 84 inch links that comes with it. And I went ahead and ordered the one extra 84 inch extension. So when it get done, all said and true from one end to the other, it's gonna be three times 84 or 21 feet essentially. Now the capacity of your log or your lumber is gonna be less than that because your saw head up here on the end takes takes up a couple, a couple of feet. And of course, you're not gonna saw all the way directly to the end of your bunk assembly. That's where we're at right now. So we'll just go ahead and pick up the video from a halfway of a decent start. Now we're down to the nitty gritty having to figure out all the parts and pieces. I got a call for the missus. She actually helped me reading the directions and uh, picking out the nuts and bolts and everything this far. So it's time for her to come back so we can go ahead and do a little more of the stuff that requires a little thinking. Now this is supposed to be a symbol laying down flat with the face of the, uh, the saw head setting on a carpet or something like that about seven or eight inches up off the deck, you know, on some uh, pallets or whatever. Uh, but this, this is the way I'm doing it here. I've already got it on, so I'm going to lower it. No muss, no fuss, no pinch fingers. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it, and we'll figure out what the next step's going to be. This is typically one of the leveling lathes. I think there's 10 comes with the original twin 84-inch sections. What I've got is a rudimentary adjustment to try to get them setting about the same level for whenever I set it back on the ground so I got a close starting point. So we're finishing up squaring everything up, get everything perfectly level so we can actually securely torque all the bolts down for the bunks, the side rails, the bed frame, and everything of that nature. But the trick is getting this thing perfectly level and perfectly square. I've got it where it needs to be right now. They recommend stretching a extremely tight line from one end to the other on both sides to gain that level. And what they suggested was taking one of the nuts and putting it under the string on each end and then coming to the center and gauging it and adjusting these legs apart accordingly by slipping a nut under and taking it back out, adjust until you get the correct height. So that's what I've done up and down both sides. I've got to tighten everything down and then double check again before we're ready for the next step. Now we're gonna double check everything and go on to the next step. Now once the bed frame is squared and leveled and everything tightened securely, it's time to move on back to the saw head. The saw head comes pre-assembled with the exception of the parts that it slides up and down on. These have to be field assembled and then field, the saw head field installed onto this. And this is the winch, the winch uh, side mount plate. This is the, uh, the other winch side mount plate. There's a, there's a left and a right, obviously. Then also there's a front cover that goes on right here. And we're getting ready to put that on. Once the squaring of everything is done on the bed frame, it's remarkably simple how all this stuff goes together. Well, I probably should have taken the time to get a lot more up close and personal, you know, with some of the assembly of these things. You do have to spend just a few minutes familiarizing yourself with the components and with how to work your way through the booklet uh, that comes with it in order to smoothly assemble all these pieces. You do have to jump around, in my estimation, back and forth just a little bit to, to find locations of where things go because the, the way they've got it they've got just a small picture of a certain area but it doesn't give you an overview of where those components are even in the pictorial when they've got it all exploded uh, they've got the opportunity to make a lot better in my estimation a lot better display of how and where certain items uh, mount but it's all doable if you can turn a wrench just a little bit uh, to a minor amount, uh, it's fairly easy to, to totally assemble. Now there's a few things I've still got to complete. i still got the uh, emergency shutoff switch. It either goes here or over here. I'm going to opt for over there. 
And then, of course, you got to make sure the cables are routed correctly. Uh, don't know that that's exactly correct. And, of course, i got to get all the adjustments done. I still got to get oil in the, in the engine and all that. And then I've got to go around and verify that virtually everything is tightened before I set everything on to the, uh, to the bed frame. I don't have all the assembly bolts. You can see missing bolts here and here. Those still have to be installed yet. But everything has to be before you ever start. It has to be completely uh, ensured that you have them torqued down to, uh, to what they need to be. I'm supposed to put a couple drops of oil in here on this little reel where the cable is. I've already done that. This is a tension adjustment here for whenever you want to turn the crank or stop turning the crank. That has to be adjusted to where it won't, the weight of the saw head won't just make it fly back down, you know, pop you upside the head. Once you get your blade installed, it's time to go ahead and adjust it for tension. One of the things that's really odd is you have to actually tension the brand new blade three times before, uh, before you put it into service. I don't understand that particular, but I think it has to do with the adjustments of the band wheels. Now, just like any other woodworking bandsaw, you know, they are uh, adjustments on the band wheels. I think they're called tracking adjustments. And you can shift the wheel physically this direction or that direction to cause the blade to run farther to the rear or farther to the front. If you find your blade running too far to the front, obviously it's going to jump off and create some havoc and everything. So it's very, very important that you take the time and follow the directions that are written out very specifically on, uh, on doing this. I happen to be on my last, uh, my last tensioning portion right now. But once you make a tensioning adjustment, you want to rotate this several rotations so that you can guarantee the entire length of the blade goes all the way around at least once, if not twice. And at the same time, making sure it's not rubbing on the guides because that's going to affect how the blade tracks over there if it's rubbing. But anyway, you go ahead and do this here. And then what you have to do is you have to back the tension off. You have to back the tension off, and I'm going to go ahead and do that just to show you what we uh, what we have to go through in order to set it up. You can also see a set of micro switches here that are in series with the kill switch that's going to kill the engine in case you raise this up with the motor running and the fan blade and the blade spinning. You know, once you open either door, this micro switch will do the same thing as hitting the kill switch or the emergency stop. This is the tensioning wheel here. Now I've actually tightened mine five revolutions, so I'll, I'm just going to back it off about four, four and a half. So a half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, four and a half. Now what we did was succeed in removing tension from the blade. The blade is, whoops, let me go ahead and go a full five. There we go. You can see the blade went totally relaxed at five. Okay, so now you don't really want to rotate it here because it probably will track off, but they say that you just go ahead and retension it. So what I'm going to do is go one, two, three, three and a half, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit, making sure that my teeth are staying where they need to be. Three and a half, four, four and a half. By the time I get to four and a half, I see that I'm tracking to the rear just a little bit. I thought I was done. Okay, if it's tracking to the rear, we have to turn our adjustment here counterclockwise just a little bit, and we'll see if it brings it to the forward. Brought a little bit too far forward, so I'm going to go half of that back the other way. And we'll check the tracking on the other wheel at the same time. This is tracking absolutely perfectly, as is the other side now. If you take a notice, there's the uh, drive belt that's on this, this wheel here, and it's really loose. That's okay. They say that's acceptable. Uh, that's the way they say that some of them come out. Uh, and also, you can see the drive belt off of the motor actually goes around that wheel, and the blade runs on the outside surface of this of the actual drive belt. And so uh, that's what keeps it from being metal to metal and gives you your grip going around uh, by, uh, by gripping on that rubber belt. We're tracking really, really good, just exactly the way the book says you're supposed to be tracking. Well, I'm far enough along with this thing, so I'm going to go ahead and pick it up now and set it on the bed frame. But I've asked the missus to come down and run the, run the hoist so that she can raise it up. I can slide the, uh, the bed frame underneath it, and I'll let her go ahead and drop it down gentle. And I should be able to adjust the uh, position of it to where it should drop the grooved rollers right onto the side rails. Well, I've got the missus up here now, and she's going to go ahead and raise it up for me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, let's go down. Down. Kind of a minor screw up that's a little bit aggravating. I don't know if you saw whenever we put the saw head down on the on the bed of the machine. Had a little bit of trouble getting it to line up and I had it correctly and dead nut on the dimensions that they gave us. Uh, they told us that these things had to be 36 inches. Um, the bed frame had to be 36 inches from outside to outside and that's exactly what I did. And then it showed or said that we installed these yellow plates on the side. I can't remember what they call those plates. But I did not look at it close enough to determine, and there was no written instructions to tell you, but I installed those upside down. So when I was trying to set the bandsaw assembly down onto the rails, I was actually trying to set them onto something that was 5 16 of an inch wider because these are four millimeters a piece. And four millimeters, four millimeters is eight, obviously, and eight millimeters is 5 16 And I was running about 5 16 of an inch wide. And so I just kind of thumped on a little bit and it popped down on there and ran fine. Uh, but then get, get a look a little bit closer and realize that these are actually upside down. Those have to be underneath the bottom and those are the are what the catch, the safety latch, actually hooks on so that you don't throw the, the saw head off of the track. That's these couple of little hooks and those little hooks run down on the bottom side of these little runners and I put them on upside down. So I'm changing those around right now. No bust, no fuss, this side's done. I gotta do the other side, and then we'll go back and make sure nothing else is screwed up. So you know everybody makes mistakes. But again, I think I would do a better job in some cases on some of the pages in not necessarily illustrating, but explaining the illustrations, and also giving a little more detail as to how something goes together as what they have in the book. But still, I'm still impressed overall by the machine. Well, I'm getting closer to being uh, now what we have to do to level the saw head is you have some yoke adjustments up here and I'll show you what those are in a second. Now you're supposed to be able to adjust up or down to change the level on one side or the other to make the saw blade perfectly level with the bump. And the way you're supposed to do that is you're supposed to take a, a ruler, a measuring, uh, measuring device of some kind and measure from the top of the bump at the far extreme of the blade on the right side and on the left side. And if one runs a little higher or a little lower, you just make adjustments to that yoke bolt up here, which is the end of where the cable, it's that funny looking U-bolt, is where the end of the lifting cable actually attaches into. I started off a half of an inch out, solved that by adjusting that one yoke bolt as far as it would go, and it's fairly close. It gets it within about a sixteenth. If while ascending your mill, you come across the, uh, the one section whenever you're attaching this cable, uh, you'll find out that it talks about attaching it to the yoke bolt. The yoke bolt is the very first universal R swivel that comes right off of the actual saw head base assembly, the laminated saw head assembly. Okay, well that's what comes into play whenever you need to adjust the elevation left or right of either side of your saw head. Okay, so you need to make note in your mind whenever you read the instructions about putting the cable on for the raising and lowering, you know that this is the yoke they're going to be talking about later when it it comes to the point where you actually have to level your blade with the bunk assembly. All that having been said, I do want to reiterate that I am totally impressed with the, uh, with the fit and finish of the machine. Once I get a few little bugs ironed out, I think it's going to be a, a smooth running, really cool machine. I love the fact that I opted for the uh, electric start 13 and a half hours because, you know, I'm getting a little bit older and uh, I can't imagine rope starting, you know, uh, a hard to start 10 year old 13 horsepower or 13 and a half horsepower, you know, motor down the roadways, you know what I'm saying? The assembly is far enough along now to where I can actually wrap this up and then I'm gonna go about the business of scrounging material to uh, to build a trailer for it. Don't know exactly what I'm gonna do yet. Uh, I've got some thoughts in my mind, but uh, that's gonna be the next process is building a trailer. I opted out of buying or making the purchase of the trailer that goes with it simply because I've got the uh, seven foot extension, so I'm gonna be running 21 foot and um, I don't think their trailer is uh, 
capable of supporting adequately uh, the, the 21 foot length. Personal opinion. It, it may very well be, I don't know, but I'm not going to take the chance. I'm going to build something myself. I hope this helped anybody that's buying one of these in the future. And uh, if you have them and are happen to be watching the video, let me know if you thought the same thing about some of the instructions. Some of the instructions are absolutely perfect. And I love the fact they've got the bags of bolts and they got those labeled for what area they go into. Uh, you know, and it, that, that worked out really, really well or quite nicely. But uh, other things are a little bit too ambiguous when there was plenty of space on the page to remove any doubt, any shadow of doubt for, for a, a first time builder, so to speak. So, hey, you know what? I am done with this. I'm going to go looking for some trailer parts and pieces. This is Trackman 44, and I am out of here, guys.